the very first guy to reach the scene in Havana Harbor uh, was a guy named William S. Cowles, uh, who took the, uh, uh, the USS Fern uh, down to, uh, to Havana and sent divers the very next morning down to, uh, to see if the, the keys to the uh, magazine lockers were still secure and if there had been an internal job or what right. caused the explosion. And his divers found a pistol identical to this one, uh, serial number 16334, and uh, brought it up. Cal's took the gun home uh, with him to, uh, to D.C. to uh, give a report to the Secretary of the Navy, John Long. His assistant Secretary of the Navy was named Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt just happened to be Cal's brother-in-law. And so Cowles gave this gun from the Maine to his brother-in-law, Theodore, who as soon as war was declared, resigned his uh, position as Assistant Secretary of State in McKinley's cabinet, accepted a colonelcy of volunteers in the 1st United States Cavalry called the uh, Rough Riders, and set off for Cuba, where on July 1st, 1898, he went through what he called his crowded hour on Kettle and San Juan Hills. And uh, that morning he, uh, storming up the hill, pulled out a uh, 38, the 38 double action from the main, and uh, he said, I, I, I saw two Spaniards leap out of the trench in front of me. I fired twice, missed the first one, but the second one doubled up on me just like a jackrabbit. Uh, so he actually had, uh, had used the gun to great effect during wow. the campaign. Of course, in 2001, he'd received the Medal of Honor uh, for what he did that day in 1898. The gun's history gets even more interesting after that. It was stolen from its display case in Sagamore Hill, the president's home on Long Island, uh, back in the early 60s. A uh, teenager, they think, uh, purloined the pistol, but then growing nervous at being caught, threw it into the shrubbery on his way off the property. <laughs> And there it laid all winter. <laughs> a gardener found it in the spring, and it rusted to a fare thee well. Actually, the finish on the gun in Sagamore doesn't look a lot different from the one on this, except that it's got a little more pitting. Uh, then the gun was stolen again uh, in the, uh, in the uh, early 80s, or late 80s. And uh, the guy that stole the gun uh, uh, was able to just pop the lock off a display case and pull it out. And it disappeared for 17, almost 18 years. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people went looking for it. Uh, and uh, it was finally found uh, when a guy in Florida called the Park Service and said that he knew of uh, where Theodore Roosevelt's San Juan Hill gun was and would they be interested in purchasing it for the museum. <laughs> he didn't realize that it had been stolen. Really, yeah. Well, the, the, the neat, well, not neat thing, but the, 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 the crazy bit about it is, is that he was uh, shown this gun by his girlfriend at the time, and uh, she uh, mentioned uh, his interest in guns. Uh, she said, well, my husband has a, a, a pistol. I should bring it to you and show it. So she did. He saw it, called Sagamore Hill. The FBI was there within a day, and uh, the, uh, the gun was uh, recovered and then returned to Sagamore Hill in 2006. Wow. Uh, the husband of the, uh, of the uh, woman who uh, showed it to her boyfriend uh, was eventually arrested, uh, convicted of uh, theft of antiquities uh, and, uh, and sentenced to, uh, to jail. So that pistol is where it belongs. This pistol is right here at the National Farms Museum. It is. And how can folks come and see that? Well, it's not in my office, so don't Please don't come. No, no tours of Phil's office yeah. or the vault. <laughs> it's, uh, you can find us off the interstate uh, on Interstate 66 in Fairfax, Virginia, or on the Internet at nramuseum.org. The museum's open seven days a week, plenty of free parking, free admission to the museum, and it's open from 9.30 till 5 every day. Phil, thanks for a great first episode from your office of The Curator's Corner. My pleasure. Thanks for having us, John.